Welcome back to another video, Mariah here, and today I'm gonna to be discussing what I would be doing differently if I started my health, wellness, and weight loss journey all over again, reflecting back on the last two years. So my weight loss journey, I'm gonna say weight loss journey because that's, that was my initial intention. And then I started to become motivated by my health and my wellness and especially my mental health. And so it all started back in July of 2018 when I delved into the keto diet. And I was really pushing, I even turned to do one meal a day. My energy started declining quite rapidly, but I was stubborn and I just kind of stuck at it. And then I went directly from keto to doing my 54 day long fast. So exactly two years ago today, I was actually approaching the 30 day mark on my 54 day long fast. But today I'm gonna be giving you the two things that I would have focused on from the very beginning if I was to do this all over again. And ultimately, I am really focusing on one of these two components at this time. And another one I have been, you know, kind of doing inconsistently. I need to get much more consistent at it. So you know what? I would have done the keto diet actually all over again because I learned about it. I did it uh, consistently and I realized that my energy was terrible. So I would do it again and uh, I, I think it's important to have that knowledge that I tried it but it didn't actually work out for me. So I would have done the ketogenic diet if I was to do this all over again. But I would have done it differently. I would have done maybe like five days of keto, like Monday through Friday, and then weekends allow myself a little bit more wiggle room. Because I think that one of the most, I think one of the things that I did that I regret the most is telling myself things like, I'm never gonna have ice cream again. I'm never gonna have a donut again. I'm never gonna have a piece of cake again. That's unrealistic. I'm, I'm a foodie. I enjoy sugar here and there. I would have never put those types of limitations on myself because the problem was that it wasn't realistic to never eat those things again, one. And two, when I did eat those things, I felt a ton of guilt. And the problem is that when you feel guilt, you get addicted to the feeling of guilt and then you just continuously do those things that make you feel guilty. And when I also tell myself I can't have something, it makes me want it even more. And so, taking that mindset away of I'm never gonna have certain food uh, food groups again or certain types of food, I would have never done that. I would have also asked myself the question, what's different this time? What we know is that 95% of people that lose weight gain it back in one to five years. And so I would ask myself, what's different this time? Because I got to the weight that I got to mainly because of yo-yoing. I would restrict a lot and then eat a lot and then restrict a lot and then eat a lot. And I saw that myself over time, from the time I graduated in 2011 to 2018, I went from approximately 135 pounds all the way up to 190. And that was from gaining weight, restricting, losing, overshooting, and then losing again, and then overshooting. And so I think that period of time is really important. That's something people don't really talk about. I think slow and steady weight loss is absolutely the key for long-term solutions. I think that what I've seen with myself, with many others, the faster you lose it, the faster you gain it back, plus more. I would have added walking as a daily ritual. I think that walking is amazing for not just physical health, but also mental health. There's a lot of studies coming out of Japan that is teaching us about the benefits of not just walking, but especially walking in nature. I would say that since COVID started and the Puerto Rican government said, don't leave your house. And I said, no, thank you. I'm going to leave my house every day and go for a walk. Once I started implementing the daily walks, I saw a huge, huge shift when it came to my overall wellness from a mental and physical perspective. I was shocked by how much of a positive impact walking had made into my life. I almost said fasting, absolutely not fasting. I'll never say that again. So I would have focused on one, this is the one thing that I'm implementing now that I think is the most crucial, intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is something that you get better and better at every single day. I would have combined, uh, combined a few things when, under the intuitive eating umbrella. I would have focused on whole foods. I would have actually been tracking everything I ate to make sure I was hitting uh, all of my nutrients and my vitamins and my minerals across the board. And I also would have combined eating with my cycle. So I use the MyFlow app and basically with females, there's four stages in our cycle and there are different kinds of foods that you can do, that you can eat to support your hormones during those times of the month. So like I said, 
Over the intuitive eating umbrella, I want to focus on nutrient dense foods, whole foods, as well as eating with my cycle. And here's the big one. I would have never, ever fasted for 54 days. That was one of the biggest mistakes I have made. It uh, has taken me t a lot of time to recover. At first I thought it was just a year, but then I realized that the problem was that after the fasting, my body was never the same. My body in a way was traumatized. The fasting was a sort of trauma. The mind can forget the trauma, but the body never forgets the trauma. Some people are like, how can you call fasting trauma to the body? When you eat every single day for your entire life, after what, 25 years, and all of a sudden you don't eat for 54 days, that is trauma. And I'm not gonna argue it because if you don't think that's the case, it's, it's obvious you haven't fasted for 54 days. The longest fast I would have ever completed would have been three days. And it would have been a very, very slow progression. Honestly, for me, I think that fasting is a scary thing for women because it can really throw off our hormones, but I would have done intermittent and then maybe, you know, I was doing intermittent and then OMAD. I would have maybe slowly and slowly and slowly increased over time, but I would have made sure that my weight was not declining at uh, too fast of a rate because I'm now with everything I've learned, I'm a firm believer that I rather take the route of eating intuitively and losing weight a lot slower. I would have also never used salts when fasting. There's a reason for this. There's the reason why I would never do it is because I think that when we add salts, we are tricking our body. And when you add salts, it's really not intuitive. You're not giving um, your mind and your body the full idea of how you actually feel without those minerals. And even though, you know, I've shown some previous videos about how minerals can help with preventing hair loss, I actually don't think that salts are good when it comes to fasting because you are not getting accurate readings from your body when it comes to when to end the fast. I would have made sure that I was having fun along the way. That's one thing I would have done differently. I think that we think we need to really, really suffer when it comes to our health and our wellness, but that really doesn't make much sense in my opinion. I would have really made sure that I was having fun along the way and enjoying these subtle changes that I was making to my life because if I was enjoying it and having fun, I know that over the long term it would be sustainable. I would have focused on removing guilt around food first. Since I removed guilt around food in my life, <laughs> things have been really, really good. I have never felt the need to binge in any way, shape, or form. I've had no urges to binge because it's really, really simple. When you don't allow yourself to feel guilt, the, the addiction component just completely vanishes. It's not there. It does not exist. I would change my goals within my weight loss journey if I was to do it all over again. I wouldn't have focused as much on the food component. I would have actually focused more on the physical component. And that's because I think it is highly beneficial to focus on gaining muscle versus exactly what you're intaking. I mean, obviously you want a balance of both, but I thought that food was always my issue, right? But as soon as I removed guilt from the situation, food wasn't the issue anymore. And I think that I would have actually seen more improvement uh, if I would have focused on the physical side of things and really focused on gaining muscle. So those are the two things that I would focus on if I was to start my entire journey all over again. Intuitive eating and building muscle. This is the reason why. When it comes to intuitive eating, you're truly listening to your body. It's not something that you're perfect at right off the back. It takes time to listen to your body and with every single day that you do it, you get better and better at it. So combining intuitive eating, focusing on hitting all of my nutrients for the week, uh, weekly time frame, as well as eating with my cycle um, to a, a point that you know isn't consuming ultimately, and really focusing on whole foods and removing um, as many preserve, preservative foods as possible. So really just practicing intuitive eating. I think if I would have done intuitive eating from the very beginning, my life would be very different today and it would have been a much smoother and uh, sustainable journey and it wouldn't have been so rocky along the way. 
I think with intuitive eating, your body feels comfortable. Your body never feels fear. Uh, there's no trauma when it comes to long-term fasting. Um, I think that intuitive eating is not always easy, and uh, but I think it's important for exact you know situations where you should feel hungrier when you're about to start your cycle as a female, right? And little subtle things like that and being able to better understand your body each and every day and also with the flow of your cycle. Intuitive eating would have never yielded extreme weight loss like I saw with fasting. But as we all saw, that didn't really quite work out for me. And I think an intuitive eating approach is going to get me exactly where I want to be. I think it's gonna take a long time, um, but it's going to help me better understand where my body feels the safest at. And in my opinion, the best, the, the way to speed this up in a way that doesn't cause trauma to the body and is also in some ways an intuitive form is focusing on building muscle. We know that the more muscle mass you have on, on your body, the more calories you can consume. And I think what I've seen is that we've seen a lot of YouTubers that do like these uh, crazy mukbangs or eating, you know, crazy amount of calories. And one thing they all have in common is that they have a lot of muscle on their body. And I think that you can get away with intuitive eating in the long term when you combine it with building muscle. So I feel like I have the intuitive eating down pretty good. I'm not perfect at it by any means, but what I can say is that I am getting better at it every single day and it has created food freedom for me. I used to kind of never really believe in other people that talked about intuitive eating, but because of the, the last three months that I've done it, I get it. I understand it. It makes sense and it's something that I want to do probably for the rest of my life. Now the second thing, building muscle, I really haven't been all that consistent with it. From the last three months when my hunger really increased and my energy de decreased, I really didn't have a ton of motivation to really work out or move my body all that much. Um, I still, you know, use my 15 pound weights three to four days a week, but uh, the truth is that I should be getting in the gym and doing a lot heavier lifting and probably doing five by five exercises. So that's like the next chapter for me, but you know, I just want my body to lead me in that direction, right? I want it to be intuitive. I want to crave lifting weights because I have craved lifting weights before and I want it to happen again. So that's what I would do differently if I was to start my entire weight loss journey all over again. And, you know, sometimes it's really hard to accept what I've put my body through. And it's really hard to accept the fact that I, you know, put so much through my body through so much trauma, but it is what it is. I've learned there's nothing I could do to go back and change it. And now it's all about looking ahead to what's next and what I will be focusing on next. So that's all I have for you today as always go out there and create a life that you love.